Well, thank you all for joining us to talk about a subject matter that perhaps we all never want to talk about, <laughs> and that is privacy online, a huge topic. But before we get started, if you could just introduce yourself and uh, what you do, where, where you're from. My name is Kara Jablonski. I am a local blogger here in Seattle, Washington, for IamTheMaven.com. Uh, my name is Ben McCaskill. I am the director of customer success at SmugMug, where I've spent the last 12 years making sure that our customers uh, succeed in accomplishing what they want with their photos online. Um, I'm Laura Winslow. I'm a portrait photographer based um, in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And I also do uh, commercial photography, and I am a Samsung, Samsung image logger. All right. Well, thank you, all of you. So my first question is about privacy myths. What do you think in your experience and talking to, whether it's photographers or um, whoever it is, about their online privacy? What are some myths? Do you want to start? Oh, I can go, start. Right go right ahead. Go right <laughs> sure. ahead. Go right ahead. So I think one of the myths or at least misconceptions that I see is the difference between uh, findability and accessibility in terms of so you can exclude your images, assuming you want to exclude your images, uh, from Google, uh, so they can't be found. Um, but if they are found in some way, somebody knows a link, shares it, or whatever, can they be accessed or not? We often will use the uh, metaphor that, that the privacy or the findability is like closing the blinds on your windows. Nobody can see and nobody can see what's going on. But the accessibility, the security, is whether you're locking that front door or not. So you kind of want, if you really don't want anybody to get both, you or to get your photos, you need to make sure you've accomplished both. Make sure they're not findable, but then also make sure they're not accessible. And, and what are some ways that you are able to, I mean, what are some of the top tips about finding ways to make them not accessible in, in your scenario, I guess? Well, for us, uh, it's pretty easy because we have the tools built in, right? This was a, a huge focus of our, our site right from the beginning. And so we have built in the ability to tell Google to go away, uh, right? Right in the page, you'll say, don't index this stuff, you know, go away. And for some people, that's enough. They don't mind if it's accessible. They just, you know, let's not make it easy to find, right? Um, but we also offer passwords on galleries or on the site uh, as a whole. And we also offer very specific uh, access control down to a person list. So if you only want your friend Bob to see it, only Bob can see it, and he can't share that password, it's his own account. So for us, you know, it's pretty easy. And that's, an, like I said, in a very unique scenario, Bob. Let's, let's broaden that out um, to sort of the world of working with clients or what have you, especially maybe children uh, might be another scenario where you might be having to look at it a little bit differently. Laura, tell us a little um, bit about it. Well, I guess I would say that a lot of people might think that watermarks do the trick um, <laughs> with clients, and as long as you put a large watermark or a watermark at all on your images, on your blog, or on Facebook, that you protect a client, and it um, naturally has to go a lot deeper than that. Um, with my clients, I always start before a session with a... Uh, a client information form and included in that, I always make sure to ask specifically for a model release and that includes on the blog, um, to be included on the blog and on social media and in any type of promotion and they can either agree to that completely or with um, reservations and you know in parts or not at all. Um, there's quite a few people that have high profile jobs, for example, that don't sign it, you know, and they, you can't, it would be great marketing um, to use their images on your Facebook page <laughs> because, you know, they're highly recognizable or whatever, but you can't because they don't sign it. But um, it, it, if they sign it, then, you know, you have to, um, have that number one have a watermark you make sure you don't use names things like that you know so th that's certainly something we hear a lot of photographers wondering about protecting the privacy of their clients uh, but what about protecting the privacy of, of children in general or or pictures of yourself can you talk to us a little bit about that so i know for personally i'm pretty open online i use my kids real names um, but I also think about like I don't pass like the token bathtub photos and I don't do things 
that I went with Miss Surface when they're in college or looking for a job because it's permanent, whether it's just, you know, using Smug Mug or an account or Facebook, Twitter, any of those, I don't post anything that would be embarrassing. Um, a lot of bloggers don't use real names for their children. Um, so that's one way that they kind of protect the identity. So even though the photo's there, their son's really might be Chris, but it says little Johnny in the photo. And is that something um, that you would encourage for people if they're just starting out? It's, it's not convenient for me. It's, 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 it's really a personal choice. Right. That makes sense. What about pictures of, of images of, of yourself, um, you know, or adults or what have you? Is that, do you look at it a little bit differently? Laura. Um, well, I, I think you still have to watermark. I, I think if it's not you, I mean, with me, I mean, really, if people want to <laughs> go for that, whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm stealing your photos, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, with other people, you, you just have to be very careful. So watermarks, not using names. Um, I even go so far on my blog as, um, you know, I know a lot of photographers for... Um, you know, for Google purposes or for search engine rankings, um, use the name of the place or the location in their blog title or, you know, the, um, the tags and so forth. But I actually use a completely different area where we were, you know, just to be safe. Or if they're from Scottsdale, if you do like a home session, then I use a different location, you know, like Tempe or something. Um, just because I just don't think it's appropriate for a little kid session or an adult session, whatever, you know, maternity or whatever, to have their location. So I still think it applies to adults for sure. I, I don't think it's, it's you, if it's not you, rather. Yeah, I think the, the big thing uh, that's been touched on by uh, both of these is that you want to be very intentional. You want to know what you're trying to accomplish. For me, I don't protect or, or make private images of myself, you know, primarily normal everyday sort of stuff. But I'm, you know, at least slightly more public. I'm here, I'm speaking, they're going to put this online. You know, I, I have that sort of exposure. If you want to go find out about me, you're going to find out about me because I have a public facing job. Um, but I, I shoot photos of my kids as well. I have two little daughters uh, and I'm much more selective. Some of them I'm okay with. Hey, I was at Disneyland and we were riding roller coasters. I don't mind if those are on my site. Some of them are going to be a lot more protected. And, and I'm not even talking just bathtub photos, just thinking in general. Like, I, be deliberate about what you're doing with your photos. Don't be accidental. That's where you really get in trouble. I think that's really great advice. I mean, I think right now in the age of social media and the number of images and videos and what have you that are out there, it's so easy to just say, yeah, sure, Facebook can know this and Google can know where I am at this. And when you really stop and think about it, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, what are, do, you, do any of you know about what are some of the social media sites that sort of are, are more protective or less protective? I see a smirk there. Yeah, I mean, I can answer. <laughs> I can answer to some of that because we, like I said, you know, we've very much focused and, and we're definitely not a social network in the way that Facebook or something is. So this isn't, you know, competitor bashing or anything like that is totally fine. But, but I do worry uh, personally about certain things. I'm much more careful with Facebook. Uh, they change the options a lot. Nobody knows what the, how their stuff uh, <laughs> appears to anybody else on Facebook. And Facebook logs all this stuff and they log your activity across the entire internet. They, that little Facebook like button that's on every page, every page online, knows it's you that visited that page. And they have all of that correlated. Google does similar sorts of things. So you should be very aware. Even if you think I've locked it down to my, only my friends, not even my friends of my friends can see it. Well, that's what it is today. They have all of this stuff. And if they decide to make a change, uh, they have a long history of exposing what you have thought of as private information. So I think Facebook is definitely up there with, you should be very, very, very careful about what you put on Facebook and be very deliberate with that. I completely agree with that. They, they do, they always change it up. Yeah. Like it seems like every other month, they yeah. just don't know. It's very much, oh, by the way, we changed this four days ago. So what do you advise? I mean, what advice do you have for people to 
um, to c keep on top of this? I mean, is there anything guess, that any of you do? Well, for Facebook, it's like, don't put anything on Facebook you wouldn't tell your grandmother. Uh, anything your grandmother wouldn't want to see, or they, you know, a future spouse, or <laughs> right, but, but just like kind of you know, just like yeah. you know, be mindful, like you were saying about what goes on there. And a lot um, of people post photos of just their kids, you know, from behind, like walking away, or you know, a silhouette, or sideways, or you know, something that doesn't give identifiable features, or that you know, it doesn't enter in our mind because we're not thinking that way, but that someone that has ill intentions would use a certain image, you know, from a, a bathtub or something, you know, in a poor way, whereas if it's from a sideways view, they won't, you know, like just playing in the sandbox or whatever. I want to shift gears a little bit to um, photographers and the issue of worrying about our images being stolen or used for other purposes, not given credit uh, to ourselves. What are some things that, some best practices that professionals can do uh, to protect their images, whether that's in the metadata, we talked a little bit about uh, watermarks, um, any, any best practices? Go ahead, Laura. <laughs> um, well, I've always watermarked my images. Um, and client images that was twofold, both for privacy and um, so that they purchased them. <laughs> you know, if you do, a, I always, you know, did one sneak peek, but, um, and you can always register with Google Alerts. And, um, you know, it's most often people that steal images do not ever change the name of the image. So you can register with Google Alerts and include the name of your JPEG or whatever it might be, and it hasn't been changed. So if it ever pops up somewhere else, you would have been notified. It might be kind of time consuming for every image, but it's possible. Um, you can go into Tin Eye, for example, and put an image in there and it shows you where it's been used. Um, you can also never put high res images um, online and make sure they're just low res. So if, you know, ever they wanted to print or use in certain ways, they couldn't. What was the site where you can go and search where your images might be? Um, tin I, T-I-N-E-Y-E. -E, and you just, um, basically place your image in the site and then it shows you any site on the internet where that image has been used, including yours, but you'd be surprised where it shows up. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to add in there, I, I've spent a lot of time building these image protections into SmugMug uh, and spent a lot of time obsessing about it. I agree entirely, watermarking is the most secure. Um, it's very, very difficult to impossible to remove the watermark unless you put it down in the tiny corner and you can just crop around it. Um, other than that, it's very, very difficult to remove it. There's a lot of other web-based things, right-click protection and, and those sort of things. Those can be gotten around. Even restricting the size is better because they can't get the huge high-res version. But these days, oftentimes, all they want is something to put on their Facebook or their website and your low-res image is enough. Uh, the watermark is absolutely your best tool for making it difficult for them to use it. And then uh, if you do embed all the metadata that you've mentioned uh, in both EXIF and IPTC and all the relative fields, at least then when there's a conflict, when you're going to a site that's using this image, it's much easier to prove because usually they're too lazy to remove it. Yeah, and I was gonna, it's, it's actually really common in the blog industry, unfortunately, to see stolen photos. And I'm in a lot of private blog groups and it's probably like, Every day, they're like, hey, so-and-so, this blog is using your photo. And sometimes yeah, they really stick up for you, though. They keep an eye out. And sometimes it's brands, which is really embarrassing yeah. when you see, like, national brands yeah. borrowing photos. And they've, like, there's, like, a little smidge in the watermark, and it's just, oh. So, so what, do you, what do you do in that scenario? Or do, is it... How worth it, I guess, to you is it to, do you go and, and approach and yeah. do, you, what do you do? I file take on notices with them and I've notified 
web hosts. I have contacted search engines. Um, you have to protect your work. So what would you recommend? What would you recommend the plan of the plan of action would be for somebody who finds their image that's being used in the wrong way? I think for me, I'd probably just personally, I'd pr approach the blogger first. For Laura, I'd probably just go in and be like, nope, sorry, take down and not be as nice. But she probably makes a lot more per photo than I do, so she has more at stake. I'm just I mean, uh, that's sweet of you to say, <laughs> but um, I, I, it happens, uh, you know, when it happens, you're just kind of over it at a certain point, and if it were like a large corporation, then yes, I'd be like, <laughs> pay me. <laughs> you already did it. <laughs> but um, yeah, you kind of feel bad for them after a while, but you just, you definitely, I definitely go to them right away. You don't let it happen, but you just basically, it, unfortunately, it's kind of like educating them too, because they don't know. We, we were saying backstage how you wouldn't believe it, but a lot of times other photographers advertise their mini sessions with your mini session photos. You know, <laughs> like we're doing carousel mini sessions. Like, or they don't even say like this. Like we're doing these and they're your photos so that everybody thinks that this is what they're gonna look like, you know? Um, so. I think it's an interesting point um, from that education standpoint that, um, that perhaps a lot of people are using images, whether you know, stolen or whatever, in a way where they don't even realize perhaps that it's the wrong thing to be doing. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, yeah, I think that's, that's what it is. I mean, you, you do see companies doing it as well and showing up on websites and so forth. But yeah, I mean, when they're out there and they're on Pinterest and they're easily, you know, they come up fast on Google searches for certain terms, then you just find them, you know, and people just don't know. They don't realize it. They just think it's an image that can be used by anybody. I, you know, they just don't think. And they're not doing it. Some are doing it on purpose and they know better. <laughs> but you kind of have to just tell them, hey, you know, this isn't cool. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. And when I first started blogging, I remember I was looking for an image. I was like, well, just Google it. I'm like, I can't just Google it. That's not mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, to, to echo that, you know, most it's somebody who's under a deadline, right? And they're, I got to get this page up. And you see so many times it is, it's the Google, Google image search something. And it's just one of the high things and they just copied and pasted and stuff. But as a photographer, not only are they devaluing your work by getting away with, you know, using it. And so you should file takedown notices. You're also, the issue is if you don't defend that, you lose the copyright. If you see other people using it, and you do not go after that, and you do not at least make some attempt, then let's say some big news organization, or you know, I don't want to demonize somebody who didn't do anything wrong, so I'm not going to name any names, but let's say they used it, they could come back and say, well, you've seen all these other cases being used, you have now lost the copyright. And so you should be making attempts. It's frustrating, it's annoying. You know, you can get forms, you know, just DMCA takedown notices are easy to copy and paste and just prove that it's yours, but you should be filing these to protect your work. So, I mean, thank you for making that point, because that's certainly something that probably a lot of people don't realize as well, in terms of if it's already out there being used and you don't do something, that you're at a loss potentially as well. So, I mean, in general, how, how much ownership do people have over the images that they post online? And I'm sure that varies broadly in terms of, like we talked about earlier, social media sites, but what do we own? <laughs> I can feel this one being I, I kind of a right. host. Uh, you know, for us, we don't own your copyright. There, there's no, the only thing you grant us, and privacy terms are scary, right? You go into terms of service and privacy. We know because we have to write them, and we can't read our own. It's difficult, and we try our best to give uh, as much answer as we can. Uh, so there's, there's scary language in there that says that we can use your image for our display purposes. Well, that's because we, that's what we do. We display your image. That's, that's our service, right? We're not taking your copyright. And they'll say, we can give it to another company. Yeah, because if we are uh, making a print of it that you order, we have to give it to the printer. <laughs> and so these things sound scary, right? You read it. 
I would recommend if you are about to use a service and you don't understand, which you won't, just shoot them an email and ask them, what are you doing with my image and do I still own the full copyright? If they can't give you a straight answer, just plain talk, straight answer, don't use that service unless you absolutely have to. You'll learn two important things. One is, do they care about you enough to give you an honest, straightforward answer? And two, are they going to steal your image? That's a great point because, I mean, it's kind of like that thing going around Facebook that everybody posts, you know? <laughs> like, they, there's that big rumor that every, they're going to take everything from you. You know, people don't really understand it, so that's a good point, that it's really just not harmful. <laughs> so we just have a, a couple minutes left. What is something, perhaps, that you learned the hard way with regard to privacy? Uh, and, she's, and she's looking at me, right? <laughs> <laughs> the blogger. Um, you know, not so much for me because I have, like, you know, a history of my husband works at Easter Work and Fraud, and so I'm kind of aware of being careful what you put out there, even though I'm very open online. But more about, like, what my colleagues have made and seen the things that people post. And the, the Internet is forever, and you can delete it, and it's still in a cache somewhere. And so that's probably, like... Not the mistake that I've made, but I've seen others make. Yeah, for me, you know, I had a friend who uh, served in Iraq, took photos over there in the line of duty, um, and shared them privately with the other members of his unit. Um, well, that, that's all they did. They just shared them with each other. This was, they didn't think it was findable. They definitely didn't post on places like Facebook, Twitter, trying to get recognition. But a news organization picked up on it, ran the photos as if it was a big scandal. The government, the Pentagon investigators said there's nothing wrong in these photos. It shows war, but there were no, I mean, they can, which can be unfortunate. For them, they just, they thought, hey, we're just sharing it amongst ourselves. Um, they, you know, why would it get out there? Again, be deliberate, be aware. Uh, if you want something protected, make sure it's protected. Don't assume it's protected. Absolutely be aware of what those settings are and what are available to you. I mean, I, I don't know that it's necessarily my own story, you know, but yeah, there's plenty of um, sites out there that, you know, you've seen people that you know and that have children also um, that they place out there. And there are things that just should, would be shocking that, you know, not anything, you know, but that, I mean, people come up with entire. Um, like Facebook pages with someone else, their child's photo, you know, and come up with alter egos and place the child's all sorts of the, you know, photos of that child on the Facebook page and, you know, just, it's just so strange and, you know, you would never think that to happen. So you just really have to think of everything. And if you put lots of photos out there, you really have to be quite careful. Well, thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate um, the notion of intentionality uh, with everything that we're doing online. Uh, Thanks. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, thank you so and, much. Yeah, and we are going to take a break now. Um, we are, everyone, going to come back uh, with another panel. And speaking of social media, our next panel is going to be on how social media has changed photography. And we are going to have Devin Allen, Rinzi Ruiz, Dixie Dixon, and Joe McNally. And the host is going to be Allison Zavos of Feature Shoot. So thank you again to Ben and Carrie and Laura. And we'll see you all back after the break. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much.